since high school, even before that, RJ has just been the most talented, skilled player. He's a lefty. What is he, a 6'7 point yep, guard? Yep, exactly. You can't train that. Um, he's a scorer. He wants to score, and that's the biggest thing, especially with players coming into the draft. You want to see people that are aggressive. Um, he just got to work on the turnovers, but I think that's the best pick in the draft, and especially for the Knicks. Um, regardless of what we decide to do on free agency, I think moving forward in the future for the Knicks basketball, RJ's the best pick. Take note. Hey guys, Terry and Trey here again. And yesterday we went down to the NBA Storm Fifth Avenue, and guess who was there? RJ, RJ Barrett, Mr. RJ Barrett. <laughs> hey. 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 We didn't get to actually meet him up close and personal because we were, uh, I guess, not there in time to get tickets or whatever the deal was. But you know, we're thinking that he more than likely it looks like he's going to be the number three pick, and it looks like New York is going to be selecting him. So we just have a few questions we want to ask ourselves and kind of chat about a little bit um, in regards to him. So, first of all, I just said he's going to be the third pick. Is he the right pick for the New York Knicks right now for us? Is he that he's that right person? Personally, yep. Um, RJ is. You don't. We don't really get in the top three often, ever. Ever. <laughs> and I think all things considered, because RJ does have his own limitations. Like I could come here and just give praise to RJ about his physicality, the way he gets to the rim, you know, his kind of alpha mentality, all those things. But there are limitations as well. However, I just don't think anyone else outside of the top two, which are Zion and John Morant, have his upside. And for me, the Knicks are not in a position yet where they're drafting just to fit a specific role. They're trying to find guys that can lead this franchise to the next level. We're still building our team. We're building the we team. Keep talking about you know, exactly. the fact that now Kevin Durant is out of the picture as far as it well, seems. Uh, we, we, see. we don't really know that, but it seems, seems that way. You know, we have a young team, so we have the young core, which we sang about in our song, and um, I think he's another good piece in that young core for us to keep building. Right. I, don't think, and like, I don't think we're getting that yeah. like superstar person yet. I like, think well, that we're building. Right, and that's what we're trying to find. So my point basically is, is he the right pick? At number three, um, you want to get a franchise changing player. While I think Jared Culver and some of these, and Darius Garland and a lot of these, and DeAndre Hunter and a lot of these other guys are good players and can be good players. I don't know if any of them have the superstar potential. RJ, will he get there? No clue, but I think he's the biggest bet out of everyone else. Right. So to me, like, like you said, we're still building our team. I would rather take the biggest possible prize, you know, down the line, which is why I think RJ could be, right. over the safer pick. I definitely think there are guys next year who, gonna, who might be better than RJ. Right. Rookie year, right? And and you might hear the media, you know, you, you know how they are. Oh my God! The Knicks should have picked Culver. The Knicks should have blah blah. It's, it's always like that. But, but yeah, I, I think that his but long game. Term, um, I, yeah. So I, I will say this: I think from what this talking about with him and what I'm hearing is that his game is going to translate very smoothly and seamlessly into the NBA. Maybe even more so than Zion. I've heard those rumblings around. Also, <laughs> I think that his mindset is already there in the NBA. He definitely comes from that culture. Yeah. Dad played NBA. I think. Well, not, not that I think. Steve Nash is, is his godfather. Is that it? Wasn't NBA? It was the uh, Canadian Basketball League. Canadian Basketball yeah. League. Okay, <laughs> but, but, but professional, <laughs> but professional basketball yes, is what I really yeah. meant to say. So saying that is that um, I think that he has that mindset and knows how to handle the media. Yep. I think he knows how to handle um, being in the NBA. Not necessarily physically, because we don't haven't seen that yet. Right. But I think that um, mentally Actually, he's going to be prepared. I mean, you, you're right, we haven't seen it yet. But if there's one thing I feel like he'll fit in mostly is physically. His body is developed. Oh, so yeah. That's the thing. He has like how, a, how old is he? He's 18. Okay, he's so a man's this body, really. Guy, yeah. yes, totally has a man's body. Like he seems like he's fully developed already. I'm actually yep. waiting to see. Is he going to develop more in the next couple of years? Because typically, from eighteen to twenty, oh my God, you guy, have that little growth. He's going to look like right? Zion in twenty-two. So yeah, he already is anyway. like a fully <laughs> developed, mature-looking man. That's what he looks like. Yep. And yeah. he's eighteen, which is crazy. So here's the thing: with the right pick, this is not a the kind of situation where we're picking seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and you're looking at a ton of players and have no idea. It was a three-player draft coming in. We have the number three pick. It kind of just sets itself up. We didn't have to make a decision, to be honest, if you think about it, because whatever happens with one and two, we take the third person. Right. And obviously, it's very likely to be RJ. Um, he he has the, the the mentality. You know, the second question I'm going to get into, let me get into it now, is how will he fit in um, into not just the team, but the city? I want to talk about the team, and you can kind of talk about the city a little okay. bit. For the team, 
Uh, RJ fits in that needed the number two position. Now, we do have Dotson and Trier. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens to them at the number two. He's taller than both of them, too, I think. He's taller right? than both of them. He's 6'7". He's 6'7". Right. Um, but Trier is a much more efficient player than I think RJ is going to be for a while. Dotson's probably a better shooter than RJ is going to be for a long time as well. So, and they did have decent seasons last year. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, RJ is going to come in. He's going to immediately start, obviously. So you're going to have Dotson and Trier now on the bench. Right. Especially Dotson, who kind of started near the end. Um, his, uh, we don't have a lot of spacing in our lineup. Mitchell Robinson can't shoot. Dennis Smith Jr. can't shoot. Kevin Knox has been getting a little bit better. But um, one of RJ's biggest issues in college was the fact that was uh, the, the players around him didn't shoot. So he would drive a lot, get a lot of charges not really use the playmaking ability that he has. So the fit is not amazing, but if you really look at where we're building, if you look at the team, and I'm looking bad at a Knox, um, RJ, Dennis Smith Jr. from small forward to shooting guard to point guard, there's a lot of excitement and athleticism there. Um, and that that's really exciting. I can see the guard really rallying around that. As a fit for the city, as a fit for the yeah. city, like I already just said, I yeah. think that he has the right mentality. He already, he already knows what this is going to be about. He knows the media frenzy. He's been around it. So I feel like he's seasoned in that part of it. That's the biggest part, right? Like he is someone who is made for New York. Yeah. You don't really get these made for New York guys all the time. He's someone who seems like he loves it. He relishes being in New York. He's talking about he wants to be here. He he's really, not, really wants to be here. Not, not, working, not out. working out with anybody else. Like, he's like, I want to be in New York. This is where I am. As Knicks fans, we're used to players. We're used to rumors about guys wanting to be in New York and then it never happening. I don't think we should take for granted someone who's telling you straight up in no uncertain terms, I hope they draft me, I want to be here. And I have not worked out with any other team. <laughs> right, that, that is a really, you know, playing for the Knicks is not just playing basketball, it's all these other things. And someone who's embracing that before, and I can mention before his dad, Steve Nash being his godfather, it's really, you know, he seems made for this, built for this. He said that on uh, interviews, like I'm built for this. So not everyone is built for New York. You know, a lot of the criticism about LeBron all these years when we were rumored it was like LeBron didn't want it. LeBron didn't want to come to New York. He couldn't. He wasn't built for it's, it. It's a lot of pressure to it's play. It's a lot. Here. It's a lot of pressure to play so, here. In the new, I mean, they find they find and dig in to find news stories about oh, you. Oh, every day, every day. So, and then you know, you look at this. There, like I said, there are guys. If you think Culver, for example, is going to be a more polished player, how is Culver going to take New York? We don't know. So you can have a better player who may come to New York and fail simply because it's maybe not the right place for him. Part of, part of the game is mental. It's part mental. Of the game is a, a, there's a mental aspect of the game. I mean, obviously, yes, you have to have the skill, but there is a mental aspect of the game that could kind of get you, like, really down or yep. could have you with good spirits. So Exactly. Yeah. Um, and the third question is, how will he overcome his limitations? I want to shout out Spencer Perlman, who has a, one, real Sorry, quick, no, no, no. Who had a great quote, and he pretty much said, RJ is the Kobe mindset without the Kobe skill set. Are you worried that this alpha thing could, because it can go two ways, right? right? An alpha, you know, I'm the guy, can be the person who leads you, or it could be the person who's the annoying person who thinks... Who's, too, who's too cocky who's too and cocky, thinks they know their shit. Doesn't want to pass. And doesn't want it right. Right. Yeah. So um, are you worried about that? I'm not, because what I saw of the footage that we looked at of him playing in college, um, I liked what I saw. Um, he seemed to be a, a all-round player that wanted to pass the ball. He didn't seem to be the one that, oh, I've got to take it to the rim, i got to shoot on my own. He definitely seems to want to use his body and be physical with his body. He wasn't afraid of getting hit. Um, which and, I love, which by I like. Way. And the other thing I saw that I really liked about him was he could change his pace up. Yep. And that was like really um, kind of uh, dynamic to see, to see him like moving up, the, up and down the court really fast, but then being able to sort of stop and like cut and like move sort of short in between. And I think that can kind of confuse um, other players as well, because you don't know what he's going to do. Is he, yep. is he flying down or is he kind of... Playing or, the game or out is here. he going yeah. back between each one? You know that ability to change speeds on mm -hmm. a dime and like keep people on their toes yep, I like is that. elite, and it's something that not everyone has. It's something that you sometimes can't even develop. Right. Um, and you know his 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 natural athleticism is is pretty good. I think he's gonna fit into the league well. We talked about his body before yeah. as well. Now he's a left hander. Yes. Which, um Is that frowned upon in the NBA? Because it well, seems like it. No, 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 no. Is. Actually, to be know. honest. So it's like a yes or no thing. I mean, the truth is though, generally speaking, left handers are revered because. Guys train defense on right hand people mostly. Got so it. when you have so a left hander, okay. it kind of changes how you're supposed to think about what you're doing defensively. Right. Um, and you see guys like James Harden, of course, Michael Red in the past. Uh, a lot of these guys are, you know, they get to be a lot more craftier because they're using your left and maybe the defense isn't as used to it. Well, uh, I also think that yeah. because he's a left hander and because he's so young, that he actually may start to learn to use his right hand. Well, I hope so. And then that's going to be great <laughs> then because then he can use both. That's a problem. 
Right now, if you, in college, RJ is so big and strong, he's able to overpower guys. It's not going to happen in the NBA, no matter how developed his body is. You have to be Zion level to do that to these grown men. RJ Barrett, you know, doing his whole left hand thing in a league where he can't just get past you because they're really going to be strong as well. Mm. These guys are smart. They're going to push him right. Right. All the time. Like you well, can I saw that. I saw like, that. Yeah. And when and they start you. pushing him right hard, and this is, like I said, this is NBA athletes. Um, he gets into trouble. He can't really finish well with his right hands. That's something. I just hope he's in there just dibbling that right hand all day long. That's something to watch out for. Also a jumper. He's not a great jump shooter. Something he needs to focus on as well. Uh, for RJ, I think he has all the tools, right? right? He has the playmaking if he chooses to do it. He can he can become a better shooter. I don't think his form is busted to the point like Markel Fultz where he can never develop it. Right. Um, and his mentality is there, which is really cool. I think the mentality so being there can help everything So I think he is going to focus on all, all of the things that you would want someone to be like, okay, I want you in the gym every night, learn to use your right hand. I want you in the gym every night, learn to like defend without getting into foul trouble. Right. Um, because you have the right mentality, I think that you can learn those things. Or, or can it go, nah, I got this. <laughs> but the thing is, I don't think it's going to go really, out there, RJ. Yeah, I'm I, just I, bringing yeah. up, I'm yeah, being yeah, devil's yeah. advocate because one of the things about his whole, you know, Mamba mentality thing is that it could go the wrong way. Right. This is why I think development plays a role. Because the uh, right, someone said this as well. They said they don't think Fizdale could be the perfect coach for Barrett. They think Fizdale is such an encouraging guy is that he might he might have him, not to say he won't stop him when he's doing wrong, but he may kind of build him up a little bit. Right. Whereas someone said, RJ is already built up. What RJ needed was a coach, uh, like a hard ass coach. A coach who's going to be like, you're sitting, you're not playing. I don't care how good you are. You're right. not playing defense. You're not passing. Sit on the sit on the thing. I don't care about your talent. So, I mean, that's just something I saw on Twitter. It's kind of yeah. interesting to think about. I, I have faith in Fizdale to figure this out the right way and make sure RJ grows. But, you know, RJ is like a seed right now. And like I said before, that kind of mentality can become destructive or ridiculously positive. And it really depends on what happens during his career. Because he's someone who the right coach, the right system, the right development, he harnesses that same, you yeah. know, alpha thing. Th that's for every player. But know? even more that's so someone player. like RJ with this mentality. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because his mentality, he's a, he's a strong mindset about himself and what he wants to do and how he sees basketball. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it could go either way. And I, right. I do trust the Knicks though. I do think their development team is like, what we're doing now, I really like it. Um, real quick, there's this rumors about Garland and now we're working out Garland tomorrow last minute. Right. That's interesting. Because they're calling it due diligence, but the Knicks have been scouting since last November. They've seen everyone. Due diligence and Perry. Perry with one thing with Perry, he's not unprepared, right? See, well, here's it, the thing: you have, to, you have to be prepared for any anything. scenario that can exactly. happen. Now, even though we have the third pick, and we are assuming that Zion is going first, we right. are assuming that Morant is going second. You know. We have no idea what's going to happen. So yeah. many, so many trades and things happen in between the draw on, on draft on night draft itself. Night. Uh, by the way, where yeah. are you guys going to be for draft night? Because we are going to be at Slattery's Pub We're on Thirty Bits, Thirty Bits Street, Thirty Sixth Street on the east yeah. side. We'd love you to come join us. Um, it's going to be a few YouTubers out there, and it's going to be fun, and we're going to, you know, be able to drink and. Hang out. <laughs> and and drink a lot because we're happy or drink a lot because we're sad. But, um, you know, speaking of just the whole last minute thing, um, Perry working out, I don't think it's a last minute thing, first of all. Mm -hmm. It may be last minute in what they're, what, maybe it's a smoke screen. Maybe they're trying to let the Pelicans know. Because what's happening is the Pelicans are number four. I think they want RJ and they're being a little aggressive about certain things. Yeah, RJ and Zion are like are best they, friends. Like, exactly. like, like for real best, for friends. real best friends. Not like, oh yeah, they played in the same school together. They really they are really best like friends. Them. And would they consider jumping ahead? Because we're not trading. It was already reported. We turned down trades. We're not trading number three. Right. But they can be like, all right, we're going to trade ahead of you then. And I don't see Memphis giving up number two. But if they can get Memphis to do it and they take RJ too, now we're like drama rat. So maybe I think Darius Garner, like you said, you can never be over prepared. Yeah. So I think that's what's happening. But draft night's gonna be fun at Slattery. So we're, we'll see what happens. We'll put the then. information up. Yeah. Can we do yeah. That? I got I got it on the screen. <laughs> um, but you know that's RJ Barrett for you. Um, you already know about his talent. You can the scouting videos are everywhere. You don't even have to go more into it. What I really think is a lot of times we underrate mentality. And the, the, the more so than just the, the alpha stuff about being on the court, mm -hmm. he wants to be in New York. And when a person's getting their number one choice in life, they tend to appreciate it more. Because he can go anywhere, and he knows that. He can go anywhere. He can end up in, in Memphis, right? And, and maybe he's not happy there. I know, for example, last year, Jaron Jackson Jr. didn't even work out for Memphis. Apparently, he didn't want to go. Right. Um, you know, and now in a, in a league where you're seeing players choose where they want to go, rookies don't have that choice. RJ, luckily enough for him, 
kind of is falling in the super sweet spot where he might right. really be going to a place that wants him, that he wants, in a city he wants, close to home, place he grew, he spent a lot of time growing up when he came down to play Rucker Park. Right. His dad was at St. John's. I don't know. It kind of feels like one of those, like, it fits. It okay. fits. Which is exactly why the Knicks are probably going to screw it up. <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. Peace out, guys. <laughs> As always, thanks again for watching our video. Do not forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications. That way you'll know every time that we post a new video. And check out some of our other stuff.